first time at an ACE event, and meeting all of you is definitely been a really cool experience. It's so awesome to see some really young kids and every age up in between um, a part of this, so that, that's really, really awesome for me. Um, for those of you who don't know us, Palace Playland is a beachfront amusement park in southern coastal Maine. Um, we've been around since 1902. And we've got some really cool expansion that's happening for 2018. Um, and as most of you might already know, Sea Viper and Wipeout are the two uh, new coasters that we have coming this year. Um, it's funny, I, I think it's awesome that you guys are enthusiastic. We are not setting any hype or speed records here, so <laughs> let's just all be clear on that. Yeah, location for sure. Um, our views uh, for the top of Sea Viper are definitely going to be pretty cool. Um, and as you'll see in the slides, um, it's uh, directly um, uh, perpendicular to our ocean front. So when you come up the chain lift and you're at the top, you'll have a nice little cruise uh, for a view around. Um, so let's get started. Um, I think one of the things that makes me want to appreciate the future is to kind of pay homage to the past. And like I said, we've been around for over 100 years, so we've had a few coasters in our heyday. Um, two wooden coasters, and then the rest all steel. Um, and uh, the first of those was the Jackrabbit back in 1917, um, which sat directly on the ocean front. It actually took up a huge amount of, of ocean front space. Um, our park is kind of split in half, and uh, there's a little street that runs in between it. And for one section of two acres, uh, the jackrabbit spanned almost the entire uh, ocean front. So it was quite large. Um, this is a panoramic view from 1920. You can see um, how much ocean frontage that, that coaster took up. The second wooden coaster that we had was the Cyclone. Um, this uh, coaster was actually destroyed in a very large fire that ravaged our town, unfortunately. There's another picture of the cyclone from uh, 1930. The jumbo jet. This actually came from Cedar Point. It was only there for a, a short period of time before uh, Palace Plainland took it over. Um, and uh, it topped out at about 56 feet, which is actually taller than our galaxy coaster that we just tore down. So I can imagine uh, directly on the beach that it was quite a sight. And this, of course, is our beloved galaxy which is now in uh, scrap metal, unfortunately. Um, I uh, was actually on vacation when the, one of my maintenance crew sent me a picture that they were tearing it down. So it was very sad to see it go. It had had a, a wonderful life at Palace Playland. And um, my boss actually considered buying another one to put next to Sea Viper because so many people were upset that it was gone. But fortunately, we only have so much real estate just another photo of, uh, of Galaxy. Uh, the Orient, we still have. It's just a fun little family steel coaster. And uh, of course, now on to new things, Sea Viper. Um, choosing a coaster is not an easy task when you only have a few acres of land uh, to work with. Um, our total park is four acres. Um, and uh, in this process of trying to find a coaster to fit, you know, we looked at new construction, uh, already owned, um, you know, customized, you know, what's the best fit for your buck to put in a really small blueprint of space. And um, it was about five years of research to come down to uh, a, a coaster that would work well for us. Like I said, we're not uh, a Six Flags with giant monster coasters. Um, so we really wanted to gear towards a family coaster that was really fun to ride. And buying a new coaster that's never been engineered before, you don't really know how it feels. You know, how, how does it ride? Is it exciting? What does the view look like? So uh, it was a trip to Romania, actually, to ride Anaconda, which is a Preston and Barbieri coaster uh, <coughs> that we kind of uh, found Sea Viper. Um, and as you can see here, when we're talking about size, the, uh, the park on this section is just about two acres, and you can see where the galaxy originally sat. Um, and uh, the one biggest problem that we had 
was trying to figure out how to build this thing um, because it was significantly longer than the galaxy coaster. It tops out at about 200 feet long, the base does. And uh, so what we did was we tried to lease this parking lot that was next to us. Um, and uh, in negotiations to try to come up with a way to rent this space to have the shipping containers come in, uh, stage the track, um, they didn't want to do that, so we had to buy it. So now we're an acre larger. <laughs> and uh, if uh, I don't have the aerial views of, of Sea Viper as of right now, but if you can imagine um, this top section of parking lot um, right next to the outside of where Galaxy used to be, that entire space is where Sea Viper is today. So just some fun facts um, on what Sea Viper is. Um, it tops out at 70 feet tall. Um, I know these guys over here, they seem like the real nitty gritty fact guys. And um, <clears throat> someone was saying something about actual lift height um, versus from the top down to the ground. I've got no clue what the actual specifics are. Um, but if you're at the top of the lift, uh, 70 feet is where it tops out at, which is not twice as tall as Galaxy. Um, I don't know if any of you have been following us on Facebook, but uh, we've been doing this fun facts thing uh, for a few weeks, and someone asked um, to verify this fact, and um, because we had posted a fun fact that said it was uh, twice as tall. The manual that I had in the office <coughs> had a different model of Galaxy uh, than what we actually had, and uh, so my information was right wrong. It was not uh, twice as tall. The galaxy that we had was about 47 feet. Uh, when tested in Italy, before it was dismantled and shipped over here to us, uh, tested at just over 40 miles an hour. Uh, like I said, it is engineered by Preston and Barbieri. The track base is 200 feet length and 87 feet wide. It's the first of its model to be here in the U.S. So there are a few um, around the world, but not many. Uh, it's a fairly new engineered uh, track. Uh, it takes 28 shipping containers to get it here, um, and 22 days overseas to get it into the port of Boston. So it's traveling a long way. Uh, the total length of track is approximately 1,500 feet. And this is the first container that arrived on November 22nd. <clears throat> and the photos I'm going to take you through now are kind of like a time lapse. And you'll see really how quickly this track went together. This is the galvanized stands. 1129, we uh, were almost completed with the base. This is the first piece of track. This is the track being hoisted up onto those first set of jack stands. Um, December 1st was when that first piece of track went up. Um, and this is going to take shape really quickly. So the next day, handful more pieces. The fourth, we got starting to see those curves and the turns up on the back side. <laughs> December 7th is when the track really started to come together. You can really see some of those turns coming into form. And then by the afternoon, the top peak was installed and the whole length of the uh, 200 feet had track on it. 
This picture on the left is from the base of the lift looking up. And then the next day, more track installed down in the back corner, what I call the funnel. Um, it's actually not a complete funnel. Looking from the outside, um, it, it looks like you would just kind of wind down it, but that's not quite the case. It's a little bit of an illusion. And then by December 11th, the track was complete. So that's a pretty quick um, installation of uh, 1,500 feet of track, uh, which was quite impressive to me. I had no idea that it would be that fast. There was actually several days in between where I didn't go out and take photos because I didn't expect to see much difference. And then it came out on the 11th and it was done. This is from the center of the funnel looking up towards the lift. And then this is what I call the funnel. <laughs> so this is probably the coolest picture I've got so far from this winter. One of my maintenance guys went up in a big boom um, so that we could get a really cool view of the curves and the turns. Uh, this is the obviously the section that is away from the ocean. So when you come up the lift, come around, um, you'd be facing the water. So this is Sea Viper. Now he's missing a little bit of his front face. Because um, as I said on Facebook, we've been doing some promos and stuff, kind of revealing Sea Viper as it comes along. But uh, next weekend uh, will be the final reveal and you'll get to see Sea Viper in full. Um, it's what we would call a hybrid of a snakefish. And uh, before it was disassembled and shipped to us, the manufacturers in Italy uh, did a video for us. So this is video of the actual Sea Viper um, before it was painted. very quiet on the track. It's a very smooth car um, and it's amazingly uh, softer, especially than from what the Galaxy was. I don't know if any of you here have ridden the Galaxy. It's a very loud, ticking kind of uh, sound that the Gal Galaxy used to make. So it's no, uh, you know, uh, sparkling clean video, but you kind of get a sense of um, what uh, what Sea Viper would be like after before. It was um, and so we also now that we have this full uh, acre, full acre of land, um, uh, Joel, who's the owner of the land. Uh, decided that he needed to fill that space with a second coaster. So, um, Wipeout. <laughs> Wipeout is a uh, figure eight spinning coaster by SBF Visa. Um, this is a really fun little family coaster um, that's going to have a beach surfer theme. This is, this is the actual engineering of, of what our wipeout will look like, our track color, the colors we've picked for our cars, um, and the paneling that we've designed. 
with it. Now this, I don't know if any of you have ever written one of these. There are a few in the US. <clears throat> it's kind of like a tilt-a-whirl. You put someone heavy on one side and you'll spin that much more as you go around the track. That's what I like to call vomit inducing. <laughs> um, and uh, I read one of these that was set up in IAPA in Orlando a few years ago. And um, it, it's really fun if you can get the right weight distribution. Um, so be wary of that if you ever ride one. <laughs> uh, this is also an Italian coaster coming from Italy as well. Um, and it's due to open in June of this year. We don't have an exact date for it because it has not arrived yet. And of course, with all the snow that we've gotten, that's really starting to push us back. But it will be open and, and operational for uh, 2018. This is what that half of the park used to look like. Um, all of the photography that we have is like pretty much obsolete right, right now because uh, Which one the ones seven of our rides uh, have moved location. And of course, the Galaxy Coaster is no longer there. Um, we have some really cool things that we're going to try to do for uh, Sea Vipers opening. One of those things is um, an auction. We are going to have a public auction for the first public ride on Sea Viper. Um, all of the proceeds will go to a local children's charity. That auction will start uh, April 1st. I look forward to Russ all the details if anyone's interested or in Southern Maine and wants to be a part of that event. Um, I think it's going to be really cool. The other thing is that uh, you all have been invited uh, to come to our park for July 21st in combination with an event with Funtown. Uh, what we're going to do is open up uh, the, the three coasters. The three, the three, <laughs> the three coasters <laughs> that are on this side of the park for you guys um, in the morning before the park opens for the day and we'll probably have some uh, breakfast foods and whatnot for you. Um, so you'll get about an hour of ride time um, uh, just all by your lonesome. So we hope that as many of you as possible are able to come out for that because I think it's going to be really fun. And that's about it. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, no, so Wipeout is going in the front um, street side of uh, kind of uh, kitty corner. Not kitty corner, but making an L with sea pepper. So you're going from three posters to four? <laughs> We're going from two, two posters, posters to three. To three. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Where's what? Where are the other rides that are being moved? Okay, so are you familiar with our park? Okay. Let's see if I can go back here. Okay, so adrenaline, uh, which is right here, is moved to where Convoy used to be. Convoy, which is a kitty ride, is now over here where Fiesta used to be. Fiesta is gone. We sold that in the fall to an amusement park in France. All of these kitty rides here have been realigned, and some of them have been swapped around. Power Surge stays where it is. Orient stays where it is. Um, but Riptide is now back uh, flush against the ocean side. Sea Viper sits right here. So if I'm looking at these in and out lines, um, it pretty much comes right to the edge of this first uh, yellow arrow. Comes all the way down to about here, around, and all the way up like this. A uh, wipeout is going to be right up in this area near where um, adrenaline used to be. Any other questions?
Oh, you guys are easy on me. I feel like everybody else got beaten. You have your challenge. I'm trying to get beaten. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So you still have a little bit of that parking lot left, but it seems mostly blocked off. So is that just becoming employee parking or storage? Or? Yeah, so um, uh, we have a little bit more employee parking now that we can offer. Um, if anyone's been to Old Orchard Beach, they know how, how tightly uh, knit the buildings and everything are down there. There's just not a lot of real estate. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot of that big parking lot remaining. Um, so most of it will be for employees. There's a potential that there might be some availability or VIP parking, um, but everything has to be remeasured and rewind uh, now that the coaster is sitting on a majority of that space. So. I'm disappointed. I thought you were going to be with some technical questions over here at this table. We've got another one. Uh, okay. You're keeping Orient Express. Is, is that being rehabbed? I mean, great. It's been a while since I've been to your park. I apologize. But it was kind of rough the last time I was like, like the wheels seem to be catching weird. Has that been rehabbed in the last? Yeah, I mean, years? all of our rides get rehabbed okay. every year. Some of them get massive overhauls okay. uh, where they're kind of taken apart piece by piece. Okay. I don't know when the last time you were at the park. About six years ago. Yeah, so since then, I'm sure probably the cars have been rehabbed, the wheels have all been rehabbed, yeah. and the track. Um, it's not going to go overgo a, a facelift or anything like that in the near future. Um, I actually wouldn't be surprised if it if it left within the, the next couple of years. And, yeah, I know it's still up for sale. Mm -hmm. What's that? Uh, I know it's still up for sale. It is. Yeah, yeah do you want to buy it? I got a hundred bucks. I don't think that'll cut it. It probably cost you more than that just to get it off the lot. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. So, like, um, when we made the decision to go with Preston and Barb and again, we don't really see many of their coasters out, especially in the United States. What really Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, Joel, who's the owner of Palace he had, um, he's known um, uh, Francesco Ferrari, who is the main engineer of President Barbieri for many years, um, and had met several times. Um, at the time, this was a newer model that they had, and uh, there was one of them, I don't remember which location it was, but. Um, it was an area that was going through quite a bit of local civil war, and so it just wasn't um, safe to travel to um, a few years ago. Um, we looked at several others in the meantime. We looked at, uh, we had several companies custom engineer um, something to fit on our park. Nothing really piqued our interest. Um, and then uh, Preston and Barbieri opened up Anaconda in Romania, and so my boss and a few staff um, made the trip out there to ride it. Um, and uh, that was really the, the main selling point. You know, it fit within our blueprint. Um, even without the purchase of the parking lot, it would have fit. It would have been tight, but it would have fit. Um, and it met the height requirements. So we're under a city ordinance because we're such a small oceanfront town. Uh, we can only go so high. And a lot of the coasters that we found were either too high, too tall, or too expensive. Um, and this kind of checked all the boxes. You know, it's fun, it's colorful, it's very vivid. Um, it's, you know, fits within our blueprint. It's got some really fun curves. There's one section of track that's really steep, um, and it's really fun. I, obviously, you won't be able to do it, but, you know, to walk underneath it and look at how, you know, pitched it is, is it's really gonna be a fun ride. It's not breaking any any records by any means, but I think you all will really enjoy it. Um, I know a lot of parks, like Canopy said, they're pack rats. Do you have like any small part of Galaxy that you were thinking about putting like next to the queue line or anything as kind of a memorial to Galaxy? Or uh, my boss is very much a pack rat. <laughs> um, and we do have uh, the Galaxy sign still. And we do have all the cars um, for the Galaxy. I don't know 
um, if there would be some sort of memorial or anything put up anywhere. It's a really cool idea, um, but uh, not that anybody's talked about. I think we have a brand new website that's going to be launching here in a, about a month or so. And uh, part of the sections of the website that I'm going to be adding are kind of more historical stuff, kind of the, the stuff that I showed you back at the beginning. And I think that that would be a really great place to showcase uh, some of the leftover, so to speak, um, from the galaxy. Thank you very much.